gripping, kumikata, the art and the science of gripping, is highly interesting, and it's a never-ending study. The best grip is the one that works. Let's take a look at what kumikata is. Now, kumikata, what it means is a form of coming together and engaging. It's, 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 it, we take it in judo to mean the basic grip, with, with the lapel and sleeve grip, but also we take it further that's pretty much any form of gripping. So kumikata is the form of gripping. Okay? Now, it was developed initially by Jigeru Kano, as many other great things were in judo, uh, in probably 1882, 1883, somewhere around the early, very early part of the Kodokan's history. And up to that time in old jiu-jitsu, uh, there had been no standardized way of grabbing your opponent and working with him. And Jigoro Kano saw this, and he said, well, one of the things we really need to work on here is having some standardized methodology of, uh, a method of, of gripping someone where we can work our moves from, we can both attack and defend freely from, and, and learn skills from. So that's the basis of kumikata. And of course, we've taken it on now where it's a, in, in the, uh, the, you know, the competitive aspects of it, the sporting aspects of judo. It's um, many ways to grip an individual, an, an opponent. So the, the grip fighting, the, the art of gripping, kumikata, is an essential skill that we have in judo, sambo, any jacket grappling sport where we use a jacket and a belt. So kumikata is that important. It's very important that you understand kumikata and understand how to use it to your benefit and how to be versatile with it. Now, for many years, um, many people have said, well, the traditional way of doing judo is you must grab the lapel and sleeve. Well, that's, you know, I'm not one on tradition. I think judo has a tradition of innovation, starting with Jigoro Kano himself. He was not considered a traditionalist by any stretch of the imagination in those early days of, of the Kodokan's history. Uh, many people look down on him. So, you know, traditionally, yeah. Um, and what, what people are saying when they say there's only one way of gripping to actually do a pr proper throw is I think it shows their limitations on how they view throwing. Because r really, a throwing technique or any, any technique is, you know, the idea of gripping or controlling them. These are the first things we have. We reach out and touch someone with our grip, with our hands, and that starts the gripping process, no matter whether it's standing or on the ground. So to say you're only limiting yourself to a lapel and sleeve grip is really limiting your range of skill, range of technical skill, range of tactical skill, and range of understanding and appreciation of the many ways of manipulating the human body. So gripping Kumikata, the, the, the art of gripping, the science of gripping, is very important. There are many ways to grip the human body, and we're just going to show a few of them here in these, in these video clips. Let's talk about the basic kumikata, the basic standardized gripping. Now, the, I'm going to show a short video clip here. But remember your, your surite, what is called your surite, your lifting hand. Uh, suri is to lift, lift something up, to hang it up, and control it in that manner. And that's your, and if you're doing a right side throw, it's your, your right hand. And your left hand would be your hikite, or your pulling hand. Now, don't limit yourself to thinking you only have to lift them up in like a surikomi lifting action, you know, lifting pulling action. There are many ways to manipulate your opponent with the hikite and the surite. So this very first clip we're going to show is the basic methodology for using the, the hikite and the, and the surite uh, for taiotoshi. So it's just going to be a very short clip here, and you get the idea of how to do the, your hikite, surite on a very basic level, at least the way I teach it, and maybe some of the teach, people may teach it a bit differently, but it's pretty much the standardized grip, lapel and sleeve grip. So that's what this first clip's going to be about. to step. And each time I'm stepping, I'm pulling my, my hikite, my pulling hand up, and like I'm looking at the back of my hand, and I want a nice straight line back here. I don't want to pull it down. Now, we, there are different ways you can do it to pull it down. Some of us have a tattoo where we do that, but right now the very basic elements of it are like this. 
That's the hikite, like this. And look at it. So just kind of keep and turn your head and keep looking. That turns your body. Now your right hand, when you're doing this, is when I step, this is the surite, the lifting hand. A lot of people call it the power hand or the steering hand or directional hand. Okay, when I pull so like this, when I want to do my fist straight up in the, el in, my, in the air, my elbow right along the line of this pectoral. Okay, and I think this will be helpful for you, so you get that right there. Okay, so when I watch my surite, like this. See that? And see how I'm turning, okay? Okay. Now notice my step. See how I turn my whole body? Okay, now I'm preparing to turn the throw. <coughs> so when I step them, step them in like this. I'll just get in, okay, one, two, okay. Now this time when I step, watch my step all the way, I turn all the way around. Now, see my foot's here? I'm gonna swing about here and drop low. Step, there you go. This next clip is gonna show how you don't always have to grab the opponent's or you know, the, the uki's uh, sleeve to control them with your hikite. Your, your, your pulling hand. You may grab his lapel, you may grab another part of his jacket or belt. Any part of the body is fair game, obviously. Okay, so you don't have to, when you're pulling, you don't have to pull simply with, onto his lapel or to his uh, sleeve. So it's, that's what this video is gonna show. And also remember when we're talking about pulling, the hikite, there are different directions you pull. You don't always pull up and out. Some people think that's the only direction you can pull is up and out. Well, you might pull down, might pull in, might pull around your body. There are different ways to pull and manipulate your opponent with your hikite. So this, this clip's gonna show how to use the hikite on the lapel. Just like this, you never let go of this hand on the lapel. It stays there, okay? Huh? Because that, instead of grabbing here, if I grab here, I gotta pull this whole arm to get a shoulder to move. If I pull here at the shoulder, I control the shoulder, right? You see, I got his shoulder hit on his hips, that means I've broken his balance, I've broken his posture. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put under here. Now, how you grab, it's totally up to you whether you, whether you uh, hands up, hand, I always had my, I curled my fist in like I'm curling weights. I had my little pinky here like this, sucked it in tight. And what I did, I pulled his shoulder to my shoulder, and now they're one hooked up unit together, okay? There right. wasn't a lot of this. And I didn't try to throw over there. And when you do it, sell, wham, hit it, and suck it in tight too, okay? Now from here, I'm gonna pivot under him, and I'm just gonna spin under, my knees to the left, my butt to the right, and I'm going to curl and just spin on my, my knees. Now, you guys, uh, pop here. I'm trying to throw it out. Come in. Right into it. Let's try that one more time. Got that left grip. That's why we're controlling the shoulder. Steers him, hits. Right in there. Having to hold with your left hand here, this is your steering with his hand, it's like the radar. Okay, I can, I can feel where Kelvin's moving. If he moves this way, I can sense it and be there in front of him. Okay, if he moves this way, I can react and catch him and open them up. So, this is your radar hand. This is what he's, it's kind of like your anchor, you know, you anchor here. If, he, if I'm holding this way, does he think I'm a right sided judo guy or a left sided judo guy? Left side. So, left I'm holding a lefty left grip, aren't right. holding a lefty grip? So he's thinking lefty, okay? Uh, when, when, you know, Becky, you know, used to train, you know, help coach Kenny. She was a, she was a left-handed judo player, left-handed sambo wrestler. She would hold right <laughs> and attack left all the time because everybody thought she was a right-sided, you know. <coughs> and that's true. This is what it is. So if you can hold left here, you're gripping. It's just like you said, you're you giving an inside grip and everything. Yeah. All right? When he moves, you're going to feel it, okay? So if he just moves one step, I know how to react to catch. And I can get right in there, you know, Kouchi, Ochi, you know, Sainagi, you know. I can even come across and hit a no soda guardian and stuff. So I'm feeling how he does. This is radar. Just remember that. That's what the coach is trying to get you to do here. So key off him. So what a good way to do that, you're holding here, okay? 
force them to move. Okay, so get them to move. Now when I do this, I'm already setting them up. So if I this is and I'm going to throw with my over my right hip or my right side with my left hand here. See how I shifted the hip? Little things make, make a lot of difference. So going like this. Now I'm leading with a side I'm going to attack with. I'm leading with my hip. That's what he wants you to do when he said lead with your hip. So when I get him, if he moves this way, well, now I'm in position, I can hit that Sayanagi, you know, or Osoto, Kaochi, okay? If he goes the other way, I can deep it in, and I can definitely throw him straight forward Sayanagi. So that's what he's trying to get you to do. It's real subtle stuff, but this is the stuff that wins matches, and you're out thinking your opponent. Now in this next clip, we're going to show how to use kind of an alternative method of using both the hikite, the pulling hand, and the surite, the lifting hand. In this particular case, a lateral or side or cross body of sotogari. And the, the, I think that the video will explain well, but you don't always pull out or up with your hikite. What you're going to be seeing here in this video is pulling him down and in and kind of crunching his body in. And you're also going to, with that's with the hikite. Now with the, the surite, you're going to be work, looking on how we manipulate and steer and direct. Um, often the hikite, or the surite, I'm sorry, the surite is called the power hand because you're providing power and driving them. You, it's a steering hand. It's the directional hand. So in addition to lifting, it has also other duties of, of manipulating and steering. So this video is going to show how to do a, a crossbody or lateral osotogari using the hikite and the surite in a not very so-called traditional manner. It's rather closing them in and closing the body space. So you'll see what I mean here. Now notice I don't have the belt in the middle of his back because I'm going to steer with it. Again, that's what Surigoshi, the lifting hip throw, you're really steering with that right hand. This is the, the hand, the Suri type of the lifting hand. So I'm going to be grabbing more around his kidney area and in the back of the hip because it gives me more, a better way to move the direction when I'm going to push and steer up. Okay, so I've got that grip there. Now I can grab my sleeve grip here. The right hand, the Suri is really an important hand in this particular approach. I may even grab his lapel. You know, Samuel, you have the epaulets to grab here. You can have Jack, you can grab this. But let's go ahead and grab the arm because I can really control better with that too. Because what's going to happen, I'm not going to be pulling so much as I'm going to be sucking it in. Okay? My grip here on the belt, my grip here on his, on his arm, I'm going to be closing in. Okay? I'm going to trap it. It really helps break his balance in the side direction or collapse in the shoulders or the body. Steve always used to tell me like you're throwing a rope around the guy. And then you're tying him up. That's a good. I, that's a good thing to point out because it's like here's the here's the belt, okay, and here's the rope around. It. I've got it. Okay, now for the sideways. Now all I'm going to do is step sideways into this direction. It's it's a lateral movement on my part. Step sideways, step sideways this way. And when I do this, at this point, when I start to put my weight on this left foot, really suck it in tight. And I point point my toe and I sweep. Some people want to call it Osuagari, that's fine. It could be Harai Goshi, that's fine too. Any of those are good. I'm get my grip here, step in, and throw. And again, you just got to suck it in. That's really important thing, don't pull. If I pull him, I'm kind of letting him off the hook. See, it gives him room to do the hip block. And I don't want that to happen. I, don't want, I want to control his whole, his whole torso. Okay. So let's go right here, step in, suck in, throw. It's a side movement. Very sweet. Okay, we're going to pause here. So your your surite, your lifting hand, of course, is as important as your hikite, your pulling hand. And in this clip, we're going to look on how to use your surite in closing the space and controlling your opponent in an ipon serinagi type situation. Okay, so you, when you're pulling and hooking and pulling them in. So the, the, the surite just doesn't lift. It will manipulate, control, close the body space, trap the opponent's arm, and basically control his posture and balance. So the, the surite, and especially in any surinagi movements, but in ipon surinagi, 
how you lock and hook and turn and the whole rotation thing. So you'll see the importance of the surete, not just holding the lapel, but using this to manipulate your opponent's arm, shoulder, and his upper body. What I want to do, I want to put under here. Now, how you grab, it's totally up to you whether you, whether you uh, hands up. Hand, I always had my, I curled my fist in like I'm curling weights. And my little pinky here like this, sucked it in tight. And what I did, I pulled his shoulder to my shoulder, and now they're one hooked up unit together, okay? Like, there wasn't a lot of this. And I didn't try to throw over there. And when you do it, sell, land, hit it, and suck it in tight to you, okay? Now from here, I'm going to pivot under him, and I'm just going to spin under, my knees to the left, my butt to the right, and I'm going to curl and just spin on my, my knees. Now you guys, uh, I pop here, I try to throw it out, come in, okay. try that one more time, got that left grip, that's why we're controlling the shoulder, steers him, hits. One of the great things about judo is its ability to absorb things from other grappling sports, martial arts, whatever it may be. And here's a case where two very important aspects of um, gripping are really kind of taken from sambo and other sports as well. And we're looking at first an anchor hand, what an anchor hand is. And an anchor hand is the dominant hand. That's the hand you have control of your opponent. You can move him, as I say, bully him, bully him and control him. And, you know, in other words, he doesn't want to fight, you know, he doesn't want to go this way, so you make him go that way. You're steering him, you're directing him, you're moving him with that dominant hand, which is your anchor hand. It's just like an anchor in the, you know, in a ship in a harbor. It provides you know, you, you know, you, you control where that ship goes, that ship stays there. Well, you can use that anchor hand. It could be, may not, may not always be your surite, it could be your hikite, but you can use that anchor hand to control and anchor your opponent. And you can also use that anchor hand to kind of sense him, you know, use him like radar, feel like radar too. So uh, in this case, you know, again, surite, hikite, either one works, but you're going to have a dominant hand. You're going to have a, a, an anchor hand that's your dominant hand on your opponent. That's really what an anchor hand is, a dominant hand on your opponent. Now, we're also going to look at the concept of, of body space, long grips and short grips. Okay, uh, My study of Sambo really many years ago, this was introduced to me. I also heard it from my, my judo sensei, Rene Pomerel. He used it many years ago as well, uh, back in the very early 80s when, when, he, when I was training with him, was the concept of, of uh, either short space or long space. In other words, how close you are to your opponent when you're gripping him and how close you are in relation to his shoulders and your shoulder, how you can manipulate. And of course, if the shoulders are good posture, the shoulder is going to be a direct line to your hips. So. This video, this short video is going to show two things, how to use the anchor hand, kind of an explanation of the anchor hand, and secondly, how to use long and short grips in, in controlling distances, distances between you and your opponent with your gripping. Left hand, can everybody see this? Let me move around. This left hand here, that's the anchor. That's, you know, we talk about the anchor hand a lot. That means that's anchored on here. It's like dropping an anchor in the harbor. Okay, and there it is. I've got a lock on there and he's, he's hooked on there. But it's also, uh, you know, again, we always call it the short grip because there's a shorter distance between his shoulder and mine if I grab out here, right? There's a longer grip there. So I want the short grip here because I want to control the shoulder. Left hand grip, right hand, got a left hand, and the left could be cocked up, right? Okay, he's gonna pop in. He's gonna go ahead and spin under me. Now see when he finished? Drove all the way through, didn't he? Sometimes you'll really use your hikite and surite together in unison to get it the effect you want. And this, this upcoming video clip is gonna show how we're using a sleeve grip and a roll with the elbow and shoulder 
and controlling your opponent, setting them up. In this case, we're going to be using Tani Otoshi. But unusual gripping is the hallmark of good judo, good sambo, good any any jacket wrestling sport. So this video ship this video clip is going to talk about using a the hikite, the pulling hand, and then using the surite, the lifting hand. And we're not really using the hand so much, but now we're using the elbow and the shoulder. So you can see the, 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 the hikite and the surite, especially the surite, you're using your entire, you know, from your shoulder to your to tips of your fingers to control your opponent. And your hikite is usually gripping with the hand, but you don't always have to grip on the other sleeve or a particular sleeve. You might grip something else. In this case, we're doing a two-on-one grip, and we're rolling over, and we're getting that shoulder wedged in there really tight, and we're using that to throw our opponent with Tani Otoshi. So gripping can be used in any way as long as it works for you. And remember, the, the, the best grip is the one that works. And there's no real right or wrong on grips other than whatever the rules may dictate in the sport you're, you're grappling in, you're, you're competing in. So that's the best advice on gripping. So let's take a look at this grip on how to use a two-on-one uh, sleeve grip and shoulder roll to Tani Otoshi. So I'm under, and I'm going to lead you back. I'm not that way. I like to come in and lower my levels. It's your preference, okay? So if you like to do that, that's cool too. That way you can shoot right behind them and come in and do some type of a throw, whatever. Eric, like a lot of guys like to do, they'll come, come over, and he will use that and jack the shoulder up. and help, that, that will help elevate his opponent in the throw as well. best way to train on gripping is to do grip rondori. And I, as years of a coach and as an athlete myself, I found that the best drill you can do in the dojo, in the gym, on the mat, is grip rondori. Just rondori using grips only. And try to beat your opponent using grips. And he'll do the same to you, obviously. And so if you want to train realistically, I think that's the best training drill you can use. We're going to grip rondori. And what grip rondori is, is just like rondori, except you don't really throw or pins or anything like that. It's just gripping. And I'm going to try to outgrip Kyle. Kyle's going to try to outgrip me. We're going to do it for about a minute or so. Then we'll get a new partner. We'll bow and get a new partner. Now, if at some point we're gripping here and I, you know, I get a better grip than him, and man, I just dominate him and say, okay, you got me. Start again. Okay, look. I won the first round. Okay? He might win the second round. But it's like grip Rondori. I want to beat him in Rondori. Now, when you grip Rondori, you got to be real intense. you got to be real intense. You know, when I was coaching young guys and girls for a long, long time in this very room years ago, we would have grip rondori a lot, okay? And sometimes the gripping would get really, really aggressive and rough, harder than regular rondori almost. And they just really, really aggressive. So you got to get that way. You got you to remember, this is a fight. It isn't a game, okay? So when we grip, we're going to do this drill. Now remember, some things I want to see you do. I want to start with your hands up. And I don't want you to leave the same side foot. I want you to cross grip here. And when you get your hook on, you move. Don't just stand there and grab because you're giving him an opportunity to throw you. As soon as I get my grip, as soon as I want to get my grip, whatever it is, like power, here, power hand here, or here, wherever it is, as soon as I get that, boom, I'm going to start moving. I'm going to start setting him up. Okay? Those are some things I want to do in this grip round, okay? this rondori round. But here's what it'll look like. The bow, hands up, and now we'll start fighting for the best grip. Now, now I want to try to outgrip him. He's going to try to outgrip me. And it's going to be a real contest. I want you to be really, really aggressive and really competitive in this drill. Okay? Don't be mean or do stupid stuff, but be really competitive. Does that make sense to everybody? That the best way to train, train, train for good, hard grip fighting is to do a lot of grip fighting, but do it right. So let's finish this video up by saying this. The best grip is the one that works, okay? And often you, you will find your grip will be matched to suit the needs of the throw or the attack you're going to be using. So the, 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 the grip is very much part of the throwing action or the grappling action, whatever it may be. So they're, they're intertwined. You can't, you can't disconnect them. There isn't just one grip for everything. There's, every different throw requires some kind of a different type of gripping maneuver or movement. 
So is there, is there a best grip to use? It's the one that works best for you. And remember, whatever the sport rules that permit, whether, whether you're doing judo, sambo, jiu-jitsu, whatever it may be, there, there are probably going to be rules. There are obviously rules about gripping in those sports. So as long as you stay within the confines and what those grip, what those rules permit, and you can use those grips to your advantage. You know, you, you know, use a grip is like a tool. It's like a weapon. So use it to your advantage, to your best advantage, and to the disadvantage of your opponent. Remember, grips can also be used to shut down an opponent and keep him from scoring on you. So you don't just use grips for an offensive move. You can use grips defensively as well. So gripping, kumikata, the art and science of gripping, is highly interesting. And it's a never-ending study because, as I just said earlier, just about every different throw, every different technique requires some type of a different grip. There is no cookie-cutter approach to gripping. So... Keep that in mind, and when you develop a technique, remember you develop your technique, your grip style, your gripping setup will lend into that technique, and they work together. But train on those grips. They're a massively important thing we do in judo, sambo, and jiu-jitsu, and uh, good luck in your training.